Hello and welcome. Today we have a couple of interesting stories including one about how original poster punishes his wife and kids whenever they ruin his moment. Sit back relax and enjoy. Am I the idiot for using a spray bottle to keep my wife and kids out of my office when I am in a meeting? I have two sons 3 and 5. My wife is a stay at home mom. I work from home 3 days a week. It's good because I can help out with the kids and give my wife a break. I leave the door to my office open 80% of the time. I have explained to my wife multiple times that when my door is shut I am in a meeting and I cannot help and I need her to not interrupt me. She keeps opening the door to see if I need anything, or to let the kids in to see me, or to take out the garbage. I wait until after my meeting and then I tell her again that if my door is closed I need her to leave me alone and keep the kids away from me. She just can't keep it in her head. I told her that I was going to get a lock for the office if she could not understand what it meant when the door is closed. She said I was being mean to her and treating her like a child and that I did not need to lock her out of the office. I have plants in my office that I take care of so I have a spray bottle that I keep for misting them. So last week I was in a meeting and she came in again to see if I needed anything from the store because she was going grocery shopping with her mom. I asked her politely to close the door because I was in a meeting. She said sorry and closed the door. My meeting had just finished and she opened the door again. So I sprayed her. She shut the door. Then she called me an idiot for treating her like a misbehaving animal. I asked her if she understood what it meant when my door was closed. She shut up and left with her mom. So before I get dog piled I will clear some stuff up. I work 40 hours a week. I might have my door closed for 8 of those. So on the weekends, we take care of everything together. Monday through Friday there are only 8 hours where I need to be left alone. My children know better than to open the door when it is closed. But she just does not get it. So now I am at the point where I have given her a choice. I can start spraying her on camera during my meetings, I can get a lock for my door, or I can just go to work in town every day. If I do the last one it means she is stuck in the house all day with the kids because we only have one car. I am at my wits end and I feel like an idiot for treating her this way but I do not want to get fired or forced to work at the workplace because I cannot have meetings when I work from home. Edit sorry my math sucks. It might be more than 20% because I only work 24 hours at home so it is more like 33%. The top reply. I was all set to say you are the idiot based on the title, but not the idiot. You have told her over and over again not to bother you if your door is closed. That's not a hard thing to remember. She needs to start being a better partner. How about a sign that you can put on the door? The second reply. I don't think he is at fault. I think she thinks he's doing something wrong. I said she was being paranoid. I said not the idiot this isn't his fault this is her issue that she needs to find a way to deal with. The reason I asked is because I know there are some, some not all or even most, women that side eye any interaction their man has with another woman. I just said the only reason I can think of for a spouse to so consistently barge into their spouse's office like this as if they think they're up to something. She could just be a flake or just totally incapable of dealing with the kids slash wants attention right then but to me this just made the most sense. And I brought it up because if original poster isn't the type of guy to mess around on her it might not even occur to him that she thinks he's up to something because he's not and the idea wouldn't automatically cross his mind. I never said I thought he was. He's not responsible for her insecurities or paranoia. Once again not the idiot. The third reply. Not the idiot. Get that lock. Your wife should be able to respect that when the door is closed you're having a work meeting and need privacy. Your children understand the concept better than she does. The spraying wasn't your first action, it was the result of her continued interruptions. If she has concerns she needs to say so in a mature way, or at the very, 
very least mock instead of poking her head in. The second story, am I the idiot for wearing white to my wedding? I recently got married to the love of my life, Jay we had a perfect wedding, except for one thing, my mother-in-law's freak out when she saw my dress. When we had gone dress shopping, I invited her and I found my perfect dress. My husband's family has a tradition of always wearing blush dresses on their wedding day. They told me about this before, and I respectfully said I would wear whatever color dress my perfect dress was. Once I finally found it, it was white. Mother-in-law asked me to ask if they could alter it to make it blush, or to find a new dress if they couldn't. I said I would ask, but if they couldn't then that was that. Long story short, they couldn't and I showed up to my wedding in a white dress. All through the ceremony mother-in-law was seething. During the reception, she pulled me aside and asked why my dress was white. I told her that I didn't want to find a new dress and they couldn't alter it. She said it was a tradition, and she was disappointed that I had broke it. Jay also said that he was disappointed when I walked down the aisle in a white dress. Was I the idiot for this? I could have just changed my dress. The top replies, tell your husband if he wanted someone in blush so bad he should have worn it. It's his family tradition, not yours. Edit. Not the idiot. I googled, blush tuxedo, and the man had options, he for sure could have upheld his own family's traditions. Not the idiot. Your husband is the biggest idiot though, for what he said. I know, right? The husband is such a gigantic idiot here. Can you imagine having your spouse tell you they, this goes for any gender, are disappointed in how you look for your wedding? The third story, am I the idiot for not letting my husband move us into a tiny house? My, 29F, husband, 31, has been getting into tiny homes for the last few years. Watching videos and shows about them, reading about them, and helping his friends move into them the works. I thought it was just a general interest, but it seems like it's gotten to be more. I own our house outright. I bought it a few years ago before meeting my husband with a combination of savings and the inheritance I got when my grandmother passed. My husband is not on the title. This is important, because a week ago my husband came home with a realer's info. He was going on about getting rid of all our stuff, selling the house, buying a tiny house and some land, everything. He said the realtor would be there for an assessment the next day. I immediately stopped him and made it clear this was not happening. He did not have my permission to sell the house, he was not getting rid of my things, he can do whatever he wants with his, and I am not living in a tiny house. I'm sure some people love it like his friends do, but his friends wives and children are all miserable. They have no privacy, had to get rid of a lot of sentimental items, the kids are always fighting because they're on top of each other, I refused to do that. I told him I refused. He got super pissed off and said he was making the best decision for the family and that I would get used to it. I reminded him that I owned the house, not him, and he could live in a tiny house if he wanted to. I would be comfortable here. More arguing and he left to go stay with one of his friends. Some friends agree I'm in the right, that tiny home living isn't for everyone and I would be miserable living like that since I enjoy my space, privacy, and sprawling. Others have said that he can't live his dream without my help, and I'm selfish for not at least giving it a try before shutting it down. Am I the idiot? The fourth story. Am I the idiot for not letting my husband move us into a tiny house? My, 29F, husband, 31, has been getting into tiny homes for the last few years. Watching videos and shows about them, reading about them, and helping his friends move into them. The works. I thought it was just a general interest, but it seems like it's gotten to be more. I own our house outright. 
I bought it a few years ago before meeting husband with a combination of savings and the inheritance I got when my grandmother passed. My husband is not on the title. This is important, because a week ago my husband came home with a realtor's info. He was going on about getting rid of all our stuff, selling the house, buying a tiny house and some land, everything. He said the realtor would be there for an assessment the next day. I immediately stopped him and made it clear this was not happening. He did not have my permission to sell the house, he was not getting rid of my things, he can do whatever he wants with his, and I am not living in a tiny house. I'm sure some people love it, like his friends do, but his friends' wives and children are all miserable. They have no privacy, had to get rid of a lot of sentimental items, and the kids are always fighting because they're on top of each other, I refuse to do that. I told him I refused. He got super pissed off and said he was making the best decision for the family and that he would get used to it. I reminded him that I owned the house, not him, and he could live in a tiny house if he wanted to. I would be comfortable here. More arguing, and he left to go stay with one of his friends. Some friends agree I'm in the right, that tiny home living isn't for everyone and I would be miserable living like that since I enjoy my space, privacy, and sprawling. Others have said that he can't live his dream without my help, and I'm selfish for not at least giving it a try before shutting it down. Am I the idiot? The top replies, giving it a try, by selling your house, your things, and just giving it a go. LMAO, no way. Not the idiot. The second reply, the boyfriend is so far out of pocket here that I have to wonder whether he's having a manic episode or something. Not the idiot. Let him stay with the friends as long as he wants until he comes back apologizing or, maybe better for everyone involved, tell him not to come back at all if he has that entitled attitude to decide your future without your input. My suspicion is just he wants to have a bunch of money at his disposal and he thought he could convince Original Poster to sell the house that Original Poster owns outright and then split the money from the sale. Yeah. Maybe he resents her for the fact that the house belongs to her and that he didn't get to have input on deciding where they would live. Or maybe he feels insecure that he couldn't buy a house himself and thinks this is the way he can get one with his name on it. Either way, not the idiot and I hope original poster gets out of that marriage or at least gets a very sincere apology and sets some serious boundaries. Not the idiot. It is very effing weird that he arranged everything including setting up an appointment for a realtor to come by the next day without so much as a discussion. Something is seriously wrong here. The fifth story. Am I the idiot for refusing to help my stepsister with her house purchase and telling her and my stepfather that it's because of how they treated me as a child? I'm 29 F. When I was about 10, my mom married my stepfather. I had an older brother Luke who was 15. My stepfather had Amy and Ada who were 12 and 11. We didn't come from a privileged background, my mum was a min wage worker and my dad was absent. Our stepfather had a very good income. Their deal was that they wouldn't combine finances, and they would each contribute equally to the household, and then each takes care of their children with their spare money. So my mum never had anything for us, and my stepfather was spending big on his kids. This included holidays which Luke and I were excluded from, stepfather would pay for mum, but not us. Luke and I also shared a room even though Amy and Ada had their own rooms and we had a guest room, because stepfather insisted that he was paying more towards the house so my mum's share would only get her one room for the kids. Luke and I were constantly teased for this situation by the three of them as we grew up. My mum always said that we should be thankful because if it wasn't for our stepfather we would not be living in a nice home in a good neighborhood. Anyway, Luke and I became determined to be able to take care of ourselves so that we wouldn't need to take nonsense from anyone. We have both done quite well with our careers and finances and we are in a very good place. 
since turning 18 and moving out my relationship with the three of them has been very limited. I wouldn't call us friends, but we can exist peacefully if we are in the same place. I visited my mum recently and my stepfather mentioned that Amy wants to buy a house now that she's pregnant. He asked me if I'm able to help out a little with the deposit. The house is £500,000 and she needs a £150,000 deposit. She has £100,000 so far. £25,000 on her own, £25,000 from her mum, and £50,000 from stepfather. He was asking if Luke and I can help cover the extra £50,000 and he said he'd pay us back as part of the inheritance eventually. I said no. He insisted that Luke and I both own our houses outright and with our incomes so we should be able to help. I said whether I can or not is irrelevant, my answer is no. He reminded me that Luke and I each gave £10,000 to our cousin for buying a house as a gift, Amy is my sister and he's offering to pay us back. I said that was our choice then, this is my choice now. He insisted that we should be willing to help out our family if we're able to, I replied back, like how you helped me and Luke when we were kids. Everyone just went quiet when I said this. After a while, he said if we went back in time he'd have done things differently, treated all four of us equally. I said that's good of you but doesn't make you entitled to my money now. He said he knows he's not entitled, that's why he's asking and promising to pay it back, I said the answer still is no, not entitled to a loan either. My mum later told me I could have turned him down without being an idiot or bringing up childhood which he already feels guilty about. Am I the idiot? The top replies, absolutely not the idiot, and I think you did turn him down without bringing up your childhood, but he kept pressuring you, so it's totally understandable that you told the truth. The original poster replies, exactly I only brought up our childhood after he tried to guilt me about how we're family and should help each other. Initially, it was just a simple rejection. The second reply, not the idiot, he needed to hear it. If he brings it up again tell him he's welcome to use all the money he saved excluding you and your brother from the family on his daughter's house. He is an entitled idiot and honestly, your mom is an idiot too for allowing her own children to be subjected to that unfairness. For what it's worth, my dad remarried when I was 11 and my stepsister is a year older. My dad and stepmom, even though my dad made much more money, ensuring that the two of us girls got everything the other did. Almost to the point of comedy. If my stepsister wanted a shirt, my stepmom would grab one for me in a different color to make sure things were fair. That was probably over the top, but I admire them for making our home feel like we both belong there equally. The original poster replies, sounds like a well-blended family. Definitely not like ours. The third reply, not the idiot, he needs to know how badly he screwed up. And he didn't do anything to try and make up for it either, did he? Nope. Not until he wanted your money for his kid that bullied you. Nope. Not a cent unless you get a loan, notarized, for a freaking ridiculous amount of int, rest. The original poster replies, No, he didn't do anything to make up for it, he has only mentioned a few times that we wished he had done things differently. And only after Luke and I had become completely independent and successful so only when he knew we wouldn't need or want anything from him.